That is ISIS in Iraq. I'm Brooke Baldwin. We'll see you back here this time tomorrow. The lead with Jake Tapper starts right now. Ride along with CNN this hour on a dangerous mission to save the lives of innocents trapped on top of a mountain by terrorists below. I'm Jake Tapper. This is The Lead. The world lead. They are the most intense images so far captured from this humanitarian crisis in Iraq. And you will only see them on CNN. Our own Ivan Watson straps in with the Iraqi Air Force flying over ISIS front lines in a desperate bid to save some of the thousands trapped on Mount Sinjar. The politics lead, Hillary Clinton, seemingly breaking publicly, very publicly, from her former boss on key issues of foreign policy, the potential 2016 candidate putting some amount of day daylight between her and the president during his difficult second term. The big question, of course, will it work? And the national lead, protests, looting, violence after police gunned down a black 18-year-old just outside St. Louis. What led an officer to kill this unarmed young man? Well, now the feds want to know, too. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper, and we'll begin with our world lead. In a moment, we will put you right in the middle of the dire situation atop Iraq's Mount Sinjar, as CNN joins a daring chopper mission to aid the tens of thousands of Yazidis, innocents, trapped there by ISIS terrorists bent on slaughtering them. The Iraqi Air Force teamed with Kurdish fighters to launch missions like these, and now we're learning from U.S. officials that the Obama administration has shipped weapons directly to those Kurdish forces. The Kurds are on the front lines. They managed to retake the town, shown here in red from ISIS jihadists. Some might say that since the Iraqi army imploded, and since President Obama has said the U.S. will not send ground troops, and since Few other countries other than the U.S. seem willing to assist, even neighboring Arab countries. These Kurdish fighters may be the last best hope of stopping ISIS. U.S. airstrikes, of course, are also aiding the Kurds by taking out ISIS targets, but the Pentagon warned today those strikes have not broken the momentum of the terrorist group. Meanwhile, to the south, in Baghdad, Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki is getting forced out after eight years in office. Iraq's president nominated someone new to take his job. The U.S. supports that move, but Maliki... Well, he's putting up something of a fuss, raising the specter of a coup if he wants to remain in power. Maliki's government has, so far, been powerless to stop ISIS. Joining me now with more on these dramatic developments is CNN military analyst, Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. Mark, good to see you. We, we have this heart-wrenching rescue video captured by our own Ivan Watson from Mount Sinjar. Can you give us a sense of just how difficult this mission was from a tactical standpoint? for Iraqi well, forces? Yeah, first of all, Jake, I, I, I'm offering to buy both Ivan and his cameraman a beer when they get back because this was a great mission on their part. Uh, very heroic for them to go out there and watch the combined uh, Iraqi Air Force with the Peshmerga fighters drop this. It's a tough mission. Uh, it's about a 60-mile flight over enemy territory, if you will. It's a small helicopter. They know they're going to be met with a lot of people wanting to get on that helicopter when they get there. They had to fight some of them off, but they were able to extricate some of them. It shows a couple of good things. First of all, that the Iraqi Air Force and the Peshmerga fighters are willing to go on the offensive again. And I think they've been given that courage by the fact that they know they're getting some air support from the United States and they may be getting some resupply of weapons. There is obviously political turmoil. Uh, right now surrounding the nomination of a new Iraqi prime minister. Are you worried not only that Maliki might try to stage a coup, but that ISIS could take advantage of whatever happens, whatever tensions there are surrounding this new nomination? Yeah, I'm not worried, Jake, and I think it's a very good thing for the Iraqi people. Uh, I, I believe that this could give them a nationalistic surge again to have a Kurdish new, a new Kurdish president uh, nominating a new Shia uh, prime minister with a new Sunni uh, vice president and deputy prime minister. This gets back to the place we were a few years ago when, it, when Iraq was pulling together and the people of Iraq saw a government that was looking toward their security. You combine that with the fact uh, that, that they are under a crisis. They have to do some things, and they have to do it quickly. I think this will all push the Iraqi government to get into the game a little bit more. And I think the president's approach of, of holding back quite a bit until he saw this kind of governmental approach is a very good strategy to take. General, stay with us, if you would. I want to go to Ivan Watson. He is on the ground right now in northern uh, Iraq. General, we'll come back to you. Uh, Ivan, 
uh, tell us uh, what the latest is and, and tell us about this mission uh, that you went through, which was just incredible. Well, well, Jake, what we found is that the Iraqi Air Force is uh, flying helicopter flights daily to Mount Sinjar. And this is in addition to the uh, aid drops that the U.S. has done. Uh, and what we see is basically uh, Iraqi Air Force in Peshmerga loading up kind of aging uh, Russian-made helicopters with everything from uh, water and food to baby diapers and baby's milk and even shoes to give you a sense of what people need right now. And then they make a dangerous trip from where I'm standing right here. It's about a 45 minute flight. And on their flight over the ISIS front lines that surrounded Mount Sinjar are machine gunners. They went to town. They were strafing the ground beneath us, strafing targets. They say that they are fired at every time they fly to and from Mount Sinjar, though, though we didn't see evidence of that, but they certainly burned through a lot of ammunition. When they get to the mountain itself, that's where you start to see the people who have been trapped up there. Now, I would estimate that I saw hundreds. In some cases, they were clustered in, in a number of shacks and kind of half-built houses that seem to have been protected by, by barbed wire. In other cases, I saw them clustered under, under trees in the shade and there were huge conglomerations of parked cars kind of at the base of the mountain, which looked like they were the vehicles that people used when they fled their hometowns in Sinjar, when they fled the advance of ISIS militants. Jake, the distribution of the aid was very chaotic. Uh, the Iraqi Air Force crew were quite literally hurling uh, these boxes and bottles uh, out of the door of the helicopter at heights of up to 50 feet. The extent that I was worried people were getting hurt below, but I did see people running at times with the food that they received. They were waving, they were giving thumbs up. The evacuation of people was also very, very chaotic. It was basically first come, first serve, and people swarmed the helicopter and were pulled on board. Not everybody made it. Uh, and the scenes, the, the looks on people's faces after we left, I would say, ran the gamut from shock and fear and exhaustion, eventually giving way uh, to relief uh, and even smiles. It, it was a very, very emotional couple of hours. Ivan, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's incredible uh, footage, and you're to be commended for your, for your bravery uh, in covering it. It really brings a human face to something that we haven't seen a human face of, although so many people around the world are moved by the plight of the Yazidis and the other innocents being threatened by ISIS. Tell us what is going to happen to these people that we see in the helicopter and what is going to happen to the people who were left behind? That's a good question and, and what was striking is in we were probably only in the air and kind of touching down for 10-15 minutes in all over Mount Sinjar and at some points when we came down and the air crew tried to summon people, call them over to the helicopter to take them away, some people said no. So maybe there is some kind of a system there to, to, to let some of the more vulnerable get on the helicopter. Uh, the Kurds have succeeded in evacuating over a land route at least 6,000 families, a top Tur a Kurdish commander here tells me. But that is also a difficult journey. They have to walk on foot some 10 miles from the mountain to the nearby Syrian border and sometimes they come under ISIS artillery fire. So that is dangerous and I would argue impossible for some of the elderly and the children that I saw clamber aboard this helicopter. So a big question, what about those people left behind? Well, what's going to happen to them? They're getting some food, they're getting some water. But it is an untenable situation and incredible that in the 21st century you would have a situation like this of these people under siege. And I saw one man with a gun during our, our tours. Everybody else, they were civilians. Ivan, it's incredible. And I know you've said that you've never seen anything like this in, in uh, more than a decade of, of covering some of the most horrific things that have happened. Uh, on the face of the earth in the last decade. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, General uh, Mark Kirtling, I want to go back to you because you've conducted missions like this. Uh, we only have a little time left. What's the biggest challenge for a rescue type mission where you're dropping food and trying to get as many civilians as you can 
on the chopper, it must first of all be heartbreaking that you have to leave people behind. It, it is, uh, Jake, and I've been in that situation before with actually an Iraqi Air Force pilot. I think what, J uh, what uh, Ivan. Ivan has said about being, being so chaotic is critically important, but at least they're doing something, and this is the critical piece. They are doing something, and I would suggest probably that Joint Operations Center in Erbil is helping that, with this. There was probably some overhead fighters watching this very closely, but the fact that it was an Iraqi aircraft with Peshmerga crew gives hope to the people that, that the government is doing something about this. And still, so few people we're able to be rescued in, in, in relative to the number of people who need help. Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, thank you. And of course, our thanks once again to Ivan Watson and his amazing crew for, for braving horrific conditions to bring those images to us. Coming up on the lead, an American arrested at New York's JFK airport after his online activity in support of ISIS caught the attention of authorities. Did he pose a direct threat to U.S. citizens? Plus.